Waveform capnography is the quiet achiever of critical care monitoring. It provides some very useful insights into cardiorespiratory function and does much more than simply confirming the endotracheal tube position. My name is Ken Hoffman. I'm an intensivist at the Alfred Hospital in Melbourne. In this video, we're going to talk about how the capnography waveform is generated. This video is part of a series aimed at those sitting the Australian and New Zealand College of Intensive Care Medicine first part examination to guide the expected level of knowledge. We will look at this monitoring device in the familiar format of 1. Biological Variable, 2. Sensor, 3. Integrator, and 4. Output. To start with, the biological variable being measured is the partial pressure of carbon dioxide in expired gas. The sensor system can be set up in two different ways, sidestream analyzer and mainstream analyzer. Sidestream analyzers are where the gas is sampled through a long length of narrow tubing, usually connected directly to the heat moisture exchange filter. This has the advantage of reducing the bulk at the patient end of the ventilator circuit, but results in a delay of around one second and the narrow tubing can block with water vapour with longer term use. For this reason, they tend to be used in areas where ventilation will be short term, such as anaesthetics, ED and pre-hospital environments. Mainstream analyzers require the sampling chamber to be in close proximity to the endotracheal tube. This makes it bulky at the patient end, but dramatically reduces the reaction time of the monitor. Mainstream analyzers are heated to above body temperature to prevent the window from fogging. On early generations, this could cause skin burns with prolonged patient contact, but this doesn't occur with later generations. Regardless of the sampling method, the gas analyzer itself is basically the same. It relies on the principle that molecules with two or more types of atoms absorb infrared light at characteristic wavelengths. Carbon dioxide absorbs infrared light with a wavelength of 4.26 micrometers. The analyzer consists of an infrared light source with the waves passing through a filter to allow the passage of only 4.26 micrometer wavelength light. This then passes through the sample chamber of expired gas with absorption of the 4.26 micrometer light being proportional to the concentration of carbon dioxide in accordance with Beer's law, which we've discussed in the previous pulse oximetry video. Of note, the sampling chamber cannot be made of glass, as this absorbs infrared light. So a sapphire crystal window is used in the sample chamber. A lens then focuses the light which is passed through the sample chamber onto a photo detector which allows the measurement of the concentration of carbon dioxide. Some monitors contain a double beam analyzer, which measures atmospheric gas to act as a reference chamber to calibrate the signal. There is then a computer which functions as an integrator to convert the signal of the amount of measured light on the photo detector into a CO2 partial pressure using an empiric lookup table to convert the values. This includes compensation for atmospheric pressure, water vapour and interference from some other gases present due to something called the collision broadening effect. The collision broadening effect is a physics principle that basically describes changes to the absorption of infrared light when other molecules are present. This is less of a problem in the intensive care unit but in anaesthetics, the use of nitrous oxide can interfere with the CO2 signal. Interestingly, sidestream analyzers are less accurate as they require software compensation for the change in water vapor pressure that occurs as the expired gas cools inside the sample tubing. The output consists of a graph of carbon dioxide partial pressure versus time with each breath. Of note, this monitoring modality 
is often called end-tidal capnography. However, this actually refers to a very specific point on the waveform that we'll talk about in a later video on the capnography waveform. So, to recap, the biological variable that we are measuring is the partial pressure of carbon dioxide in expired gas. The sensor system consists of a side stream or mainstream analyzer which measures the absorption of 4.26 micrometer light as it passes through the expired gas. A computer then converts the amount of light which reaches the photodetector into a partial pressure of carbon dioxide. The output is a graph of the partial pressure of carbon dioxide versus time. Thank you for listening. If this video was useful, please hit the like button. If you'd like to see more videos like this, please subscribe to our channel.